Thank you very much. At this time, I recognize the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Green, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I agree with my colleague that uh, uh, FERC's not prepared to do that, but there was a bill here last session that was going to give FERC the authority to approve the Trans-Canada Pipeline, and I think your testimony was that you're not prepared to do that either. And uh, so hopefully we have problems on both sides of our aisle with uh, giving agencies uh, uh, responsibilities that they're not ready for. Um, but let me get back to my line of questioning. With uh, the, uh, Both commissioners, welcome, and thank you both for being here today. I represent a district in Texas, and so ERCOT is our RTO. And I've heard that there are some pretty serious concerns that are uh, uh, about there not being enough forecasted power generation to ensure reliability in the ERCOT market in the future. Could both of you please speak to whether you think that the market structure under ERCOT is enough to incentivize the creation of new generation? And if you don't think it is, what can we do? And I know our next panel, we have a former public utility commissioner for Texas and also our railroad commission chairman, so I'll ask him the same question. So, but, uh, well, Congressman, thank you for the question. ERCOT uh, jealously guards its, its own jurisdiction uh, and, and, uh, so that FERC doesn't tread in it. But, of course, we watch uh, what's going on, and we have a responsibility on the reliability side, not on the market uh, administration side. Mm -hmm. And you have two very fine public utility commissioners in Texas uh, that are debating this very issue of do you need a capacity market, what do you do with the real-time energy prices uh, because of the reserve margins declining for some of the reasons that have been discussed today? As I look to the summer, you know, the summer concerns are Southern California, Texas, and Boston. Uh, they were last summer. They're going to be this summer again. Uh, if we have a really, really hot summer in Texas, uh, you'll see this debate probably on a daily basis. I would add that most of the U.S. markets that have uh, gone to a competitive electric markets do have some sort of a forward market, as is being considered in Texas right now, and um, I, that is for the very purpose of attracting capital for future reliability. It is not within our jurisdiction. I feel Mr. Smitherman's eyes on my back, so I'll let him take it from there. Well, and I appreciate it, and being from Texas, we stand shoulder to shoulder in protecting ERCOT. I just want to make sure, uh, and we did have uh, um, rolling blackouts in February of 2011, and it seemed like I heard that uh, our wind power growth, which has been a, uh, phenomenal in Texas, uh, helped stabilize that situation. Is that information FERC has? Well, we could get back to you, but... Uh, um the focus of the report was really on the outages as, as opposed to uh, the, the role that wind had, but I'll get back to you on that. Okay, I appreciate it. In light of the increase in natural gas electricity generation in February of 2012, FERC issued a request for comments regarding natural gas electric coordination. In August of 2012, over 1,200 stakeholders attended five regional technical conferences hosted by FERC to discuss these issues. What are each of your biggest takeaways from those conference that FERC received? I think our takeaway was that a lot of the issues are regional in nature, but there's some cut across issues that we uh, should work on, particularly communications and scheduling, the harmonization of the days. I think another takeaway is that this situation is evolving fast, so we need to really stay on top of it. New England is where the issues are right now, but it's evolving everywhere. and We heard that in the conferences. I would agree that, that this is an issue everywhere to varying degrees, and uh, the, the gratifying thing is that a year ago not everybody thought it was an issue. Uh, now almost universally people agree that, that there are challenges out there, and we're trying to keep the momentum going at the Commission to keep people focused on solutions. Commissioner Mueller, after the Southwest outage of February of 2011, FERC and the North American Electric Reliability Corporation conducted a study for the causes of the event. The ensuing, ensuing report that was issued in August of 2011 had 32 recommendations for industry and regulators in an attempt to avoid a similar occurrence. Uh, what are some of the more important recommendations? Is there a plan for enacting these? Uh, there is a plan. Uh, I haven't had an update for a couple of months, but the focus on most of the recommendations was to regulators and legislators in those three states. Uh, the, the primary recommendation on the, on the electric side was winterize the system 
go into the winter with the same kind of urgency you go into the summer yeah. in ERCOT. And I think there's been a lot of progress, and I think uh, Barry Smitherman can, can answer a lot of those yeah. questions. Some of the others are tougher. Uh, like Arizona doesn't have any storage. We had a conference to try and promote storage, gas storage, underground. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that doesn't seem to be materializing. So um, I expect another report on the status of the 32 recommendations sometime later this year, but it's something I'm very concerned about. Well, and I only have a couple seconds left, but I, I appreciate what FERC 